So welcome back to our uh, ECG workshop. And uh, as you know that we have been looking at the acute coronary syndromes and out of which we understood the pathogenesis of acute coronary syndrome and the block, the block rupture, the thrombosis, the ischemia, the injury and the infarction and the various walls of the heart which will manifest different changes. We looked at the angina, stable angina, unstable angina and fringe metal angina and we are in to look at into the important aspect the non-ST segment elevation and ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. Okay. Now, look here in this ECG. What is striking in the ECG? What is the heart rate? Somebody can answer that. Nothing wrong. 300, 150. This is 100. So around 130 is the heart rate. There is a tachycardia. Axis is normal axis only. We don't see big P wave changes nor we are seeing any LVH or RVH. But what we are seeing is there are typical ST segment changes. Where are the ST segment changes? The ST segment changes are there in the lateral leads here. Horizontal ST depression in V5 and V6 and also in the L1 to some extent in uh, L2 and AVF also. Okay. The, lead, the leads that are showing the changes are the lateral leads and the inferior leads. So the part of the myocardium that is affected probably is and, I mean, lateral and inferior or inferior lateral. Now, is it uh, ST segment elevation or ST segment depression? We are typically seeing ST segment depression here. Okay. And this is an ST segment, uh, non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction or non-ST segment elevation, ischemic heart disease or acute coronary syndrome. The two possibilities are there. One, it can be an unstable angina or it could be a non-ST segment, non segment MI. So how do I decide that? We have to do the, is it injury or is it ischemia? Ischemia means only the unstable angina. Injury means there is associated a myocardial damage and obviously this will be subendocardial only. Anything NSTC, NSTMI is not transmural, it is subendocardial. Sub so how do we know that? By looking at the enzymes. So if the patient comes with chest pain and immediately I have given 325 milligrams of soluble aspirin, took the ECG and the ECG let us say is looking like this, there is tachycardia, patient is in distress and most likely it is myocardial infarction and it is not transmural but subendocardial type of infarction. That is why we are seeing uh, ST segment elevation is not seen. On the contrary, we are seeing ST segment depression. So our doubt is whether this can, patient can be discharged with treatment or he has to be admitted. So the immediate deciding point is they do a point of care drop test. The drop, drop test is positive, LDH is elevated and other CPK and other enzymes are elevated and the ECG changes are continuing to be persisting even after one hour of treatment. He is in for NSTMI. <coughs> why do I should, why should know whether it is unstable angina or NSTMI? Because the treatment is different. In unstable angina, uh, I give, uh, give him aspirin, B beta blocker, C clopidogrel and also give him heparin and the G2B3 blocker also I give. Only thing is, so we don't thrombolize these people because the evidence says that <coughs> NSTMI should not be thrombolized. If you thrombolize, the chances of cerebral bleed are much higher in these people. They should be admitted and then look for an elective angiography and then treat the culprit question. So if you, if you are presented with an ECG like this, first of all, what I need expect you to do is, what is the heart rate, whether any LVH and other and sort of uh, access is there, just quickly browse through, but concentrate on the ST segment depression and pinpoint which leads, lateral and inferior. Inferior lateral 
non st segment elevation myocardial infarction and the let us say i have given you the drop value drop i is raised and the ecg after one hour is the same as the ecg it confirms your diagnosis suppose the drop is not raised and the ecg changes are more or less returning to normal uh, or half weight has come still that persisting and pain is persisting what i should do i should repeat the drop after 6 to 8 hours if the drop or the enzymes are not elevated at the end of 6 to 8 hours then i can safely conclude that this is not a case of st segment elevation infarction but this is a case of unstable angina okay so that is how we have to go about so interpret the ecg we did that and then we have it is an nstmi that is non st segment elevation so non st segment elevation myocardial infarction or nstmi is also olden days it is called non q wave myocardial infarction as you can see here there are no q waves uh, q waves usually look in uh, the l1 and uh, here also you know there are no pathological cues in any one of the leads it's also called non q wave but today we don't use the terminology you call it as nstmi also called the subendocardial you can say transmural and subendocardial this is also older terminology non transmural restricted to subendocardial region there will be no st elevation or q waves this is what we have understood that means there is only there is no, there is ischemia and injury but not at infarction infarction to occur the entire muscle has to be affected then only you get the q waves in the st segment elevation st depression in the anterior lateral and the inferior leads where am i seeing here you see that these are the and this is the anterior part and this is the lateral so mostly there is the anterior lateral or the lateral region and the inferior leads are l2 and l3 are avf for the inferior leads so anterior lateral and inferior leads are showing the changes prolonged chest pain that means the patient is not recovering from the chest pain autonomic symptoms are there like diaphoresis nausea and vomiting and persistent st depression even after the resolution of the chest pain and drop is positive you can add one more line drop is showing positivity such a patient is called nstemi so the importance why why we are interested in this patient is this patient can easily progress on to transmural in which case you immediately require thrombolysis or a procedure to uh, i mean reopen the culprit vessel so that is the reason he has to be admitted in the icu and observed for the next 12 to 24 hours in which case if the st segments are returning to normal and chest pain has improved with the treatment the transmural injury has recovered and it will leave only the st changes or t changes will be there that will be changes of ischemia and it has not progressed to infarction on the contrary some other patients would progress completely to transmural infarction and they will develop uh, you know st segment elevation and then associated t inversion and in a few days they develop the q waves also those patients are the ones who require thrombolysis immediately or rtpa or uh, any of the thrombolytic agents you can use or the facilities are available elective angio i mean uh, emergency angioplasty or emergency angiography and angioplasty or whatever is the procedure required we have to look in for that reason this patient has to be admitted once the changes are like this so let us see now what do you see here the leads presented to us are the chest leads one thing that is striking is we expect the r wave to be very tall in v5 and v6 starting from v4 itself v3 v4 itself v3 is the transition zone means the r and s are almost equal transition zone means i have been told you earlier the the zone of the ecg the lead of the ecg which shows r e r equal to almost s or s equal to r that is the transition zone if the transition zone normally is at v3 if it is more towards the v5 v6 the transition zone then it is called uh, left le left sided rotation rotated heart to the left if the transition zone is shifted to v1 then it is rotation to the right these heart rotations do occur because of hypertrophication all not very important but all the same remember look at the transition zone here the transition zone forget about transition zone there are no r waves there are let small r wave here in almost nil almost no r wave here no r wave 
here a little r as well as q also is there and also uh, we have to see whether it is a pathological q and here also very poor r waves so what we have to understand is poor r wave progression what are r waves due to r waves are due to the ventricular depolarization if the left ventricular muscle mass is reduced because of the infarction the r wave voltage is in the left side at least particularly v5 v6 will be very low poor r wave progression from v4 to v6 tells me that there is an infarction of the left sided muscle or the left ventricular muscle mass as reflected in poor poor r wave progression the second striking thing in the ecg is the st segments are elevated in v2 v3 v4 at least and v5 v6 slightly there but mainly in v2 v3 v2 v3 v4 okay this st segment elevation is prognostic the greater the st elevation the great the danger the more is the danger for the patient so there are ind indices developed based on the enzymes and the st elevation presence of diabetes age so many factors are um, and figured into or factored into that uh, summary score which decides the prognosis so what are the things that decide the prognosis one will be the age the other will be diabetes third will be previous uh, history of myocardial infarction four will be the r wave voltage in v5 v6 <coughs> and five will be the st segment elevation and six will be the various strops and other enzyme elevation and seven will be whether they are already on antiplatelet agents if a patient who is already on aspirin and clopidogrel develops this sort of ec <laughs> see in for a poor progress previous history of already being antiplatelet agents that means that are not working and over and above that there is a rupture and then a thrombosis going on so this you always keep in mind this is there is a prognostic score when we come to ischemic heart disease theory a class we will discuss those things but here suffice to say the degree of st elevation is one of the factors which decides the prognosis of the patient so here what is the ccg this is an acute Uh, it looks like an acute change because the ST segments are still okay. elevated and T waves are yet to invert here, yeah, there, and then this is an ST segment elevation in function of the V3, V2, and V4 region, which is the septal and anterior region. Okay. Now you see here. So you can see typical Q waves here. Uh, it, this is QES complex. This is called the not QR, no R wave. a uh, qr complex this is a qr complex so the the s wave is absent but the r wave is uh, the q wave is almost you know uh, how many millimeters 1 2 3 4 uh, more than 5 1 uh, big square around 6 7 millimeters any q wave which is more than 3 millimeters in depth or more than 3 i mean one small square in width so that is uh, you know <coughs> Uh, about 0.1 to second. Any Q wave that is more than 0.04 seconds in width and also depth of three millimeters is a pathological Q wave. We will see that this is a path Q. So we can see path Q and the poor R wave voltages are there in V4 also. We don't have R wave and here also the S wave is still persisting and the R wave is less. That means the left ventricular. Uh, dominance is still seen, and the right ventricular dominance is still seen compared to the left ventricle because the left ventricle is infarcted, and the current coming towards the lead is is rather less, and equally there is some current going towards the right side there. So this this says that this is a Q wave myocardial infarction. This is an earlier phase. This is a later phase. ST segment elevation myocardial infarction and Q wave myocardial infarction. in such cases doing a trop will it be useful think over what for you want to do trop you don't have to decide for the diagnosis that do the enzymes enzymes are required for prognostication not for diagnosis say so diagnosis is obvious diagnosis is obvious and enzymes will be elevated if they suppose <coughs> somebody presents with an ecg like this and the enzymes are not elevated it tells me what it is a old infarct the what we are seeing are the old changes he might have had a, a chest pain or no chest pain and uh, maybe it is a unrecognized heart attack old heart attack enzymes are not normal uh, enzymes are not elevated but the q wave substance which tells me it is a old infarct 
so we need to do the enzymes for deciphering whether it is old or new second thing is we also need to do the enzymes for the prognostication and for the nstmi for diagnosis itself we require to separate it from the unstable enzyme. so stmi and qmi cordial infarction st signifies severe transmural or through and through thickness of the myocardium being injured and infarcted this is an early stage before the death of the muscle tissue that is the infarction once the infarction sets in the q waves come the injury is so much that there is an st elevation here q waves signify the muscle death they appear late in mi and remain there for a longer period presence of either is an indicator for thrombolysis either means what even if you see this way you need to thrombolyze if you see q waves also if is not thrombolyzed then you can consider thrombolysis or elective vessel uh, patency procedures okay now we need to understand the acute changes are not appearing all at once there is what is called an evolution so over a period of few hours to days the ecg changes to start with the ecg is like this a is a normal ecg qrs complex st isoelectric t wave separate right? there is no st elevation or t inversion here then the initial change will be a very hyper acute t, t waves these are very tall almost more than half of the r wave when you say hyperactive acute when the t wave voltage is at least half or more of the associated r wave this is a hyper acute t and slowly the st is also shifting up from the baseline the next what will happen the st segment is further pulled up and the t wave originates from the st segment and it merges with the st segment so the t wave starting you cannot separately no because the st segment is pulled up this is st segment elevation myocardial infarction with or without treatment the blood supply to some part of the myocardium is disturbed around the infarcted area still the st elevation is present but the t inversions cup shaped ischemic t inversions asymmetric t inversions because this limb will be shorter and this limb will be slow this is the asymmetric t inversions that they occur here whereas in ventricular hypertrophy and uh, i mean uh, uh, hypertrophic obstructive myopathy and all we see a symmetric t inversion so here the st segment elevation and asymmetric t inversion is the next stage then this progresses on to the the q wave started appearing here you can see here q wave started appearing and it is wider and sometimes it is deeper also then the st segment returns to baseline and then the t wave becomes symmetrically inverted a symmetric inversion is an older chain a symmetric inversion is an acute chain so we started with a normal ecg normal st segment normal t waves upright t waves in the lead where r is positive okay usually when the r is negative t also will be negative so the normal pattern is when r is positive t also should be positive so the next stage is there is a hyper acute t this is almost the very early picking and uh, change of the infarction if you see a patient with chest pain in hyper acute t waves it is highly important for immediately to do something because time is muscle here if you immediately intervene and do thrombolysis or ptca the patient will be saved the myocardium is salvaged and patients recover to a greater extent okay so that is most important and here st segment started to becoming up I and mean, elevated from the baseline the next change is st segment is pulled up and the t wave merges with that and continues from the st segment we cannot see the origin of the t wave separately only its downward stroke is seen so this is a typical acute myocardial infarction and then in a few days the entire uh, uh, muscle becomes infarcted there in the supply where it is cut off and that gives rise to a q wave the st segment returns to baseline with an asymmetric t inversion then after a few more days what will happen the q persists it doesn't disappear and then the st segment becomes normal in the baseline and the t is symmetrically inverted after a few more weeks what will happen the q wave will persist there is no st segment change at all and the t wave is upright now we cannot say if you don't see the q wave properly we cannot say that this patient had an old infarct in this case the top will not be elevated 
here drop will be the started to elevate here ldh drop and all the cpk all are elevated here also enzymes will be elevated here also and here enzymes start to become return to normal here enzymes will be normal the uh, t wave is uh, i mean normal the qrs is normal and the st segment is uh, baseline and but the old evidence of the scar is to seen in the form of q wave this is what is called the evolution of the mn we will see some more slides a normal st segment and t wave first one second one is mild st elevation and prominent t waves or hyperactive t waves marked st elevation plus merging of the upper t the next one is st elevation is reduced t waves are start getting inverted and q is starting next one is deep q waves st segment returned on baseline t wave is still inverted then the st became normal t upright only q remaining is the f these are the different things which i have described here now look at this particular ecg so first of all the idea is what is the rate of the 150 100 seven between 100 and 70 okay what is the x What is the axis here? Right mid criteria. Right axis. So, can you explain? Any one of you? Can you try? Why do you see a right axis when there is an axis? Shooting function of the left. And try. Think and think around and try. What are the two? We are showing the S elevation. The V1, V2, V2, V3, V4, and little bit here. So more of Uh, septal and anterior, more of anterior and maybe part of the septum, anterior septal or septum. What is the vessel which supplies the septum and the anterior part? Mostly the anterior part, LAD. So there is a critical narrowing of the LAD. So by looking at the ECG, you can infer which vessel you have to look for. The culprit vessel is already known in the mind for the person doing the angiography. Where to look for the block? it looks like that it is a typical led narrowing suppose in the if it is lcx we see some in the here also and we don't see much in the lateral wall as such it's more an anterior so it will be lcx pathology there and it is acute because we are seeing a st elevation and t waves have had to start inverted and then of course will be elevated this is a candidate for thrombolysis okay now the the right axis is because the loss of r waves in v1 by the loss of r waves in v1 there is no muscle the muscle there is infected that's why i am not seeing r waves here tall r waves should be there in v5 and v6 as well as in l1 and avl both are missing because the left sided muscle is infected so the right sided potentials have become dominant and we see the right ventricular potentials being dominant we see a right axis if you see a right axis in an acute anterior myocardial infarction it summarizes and tells me that the block is very severe and the loss of myocardium is very significant so this you have to remember in mind okay this is a critical narrowing if you do an angiogram how it looks like so the same patient that this is the angiogram so this is the lad and the lad is to left anterior descending artery and uh, this is the circumflex artery and this is the main uh, left left coronary artery left main divides into lcx and this one or this could be even the first diagonal branch and the lcx may be the other side unless we have a full angiogram we cannot say this looks like a diagonal branch rather than an lcx and probably lcx has already bifurcated there so anyway this is the lad and then you, this is the uh, complete narrowing there there is discontinuity in the dye and this is a critical narrowing when you, when you say critical narrowing more than 90% of the blood flow is obstructed then this is called critical narrowing this demands immediate revascularization okay now a patient with a critical narrowing may not have symptoms for a long time in such a patient particularly in the elderly people above 50 years 
people will have collateral circulation and they will be managing with a critical narrowing. Then how do we bring about either you do a holter or a TMT. Supposing I do a TMT in, the, in a person around 60 years and then I, the trust is ECG is normal and he has not exerted but when I put him on the treadmill in the first one minute itself the heart rate after raising from 81 to 97 immediately I am seeing the ischemic changes here. Immediately I am seeing the seeing the ST depression there and this is suggestive of ischemia, ischemic heart disease, exercise test positive. You don't have to continue the exercise further because the answer has already come. So we have to wait until uh, at least phase 3 is completed. After the phase 3, if there are no changes seen in the form of ischemia or injury, then of course you are justified in concluding the test if the patient has achieved the target heart rate. We will look at a treadmill test also separately after this one as a separate lecture. All of you should know how to do the treadmill and interpret the treadmill. Maybe one, two lectures on that. Now, you see, suppose I do a Holter. What is Holter? This is ambulatory ECG monitor. Just like ambulatory BP monitor, the ambulatory ECG monitor. So here, the heart rate is given here. So at the resting state, the heart rate, let us say, is 80. And then the ECG is perfectly normal. And nobody would suspect that he's having a disease of that nature. And then nobody suspects the disease of this severity in this patient. But once he is working in the office, there is some tension. And the heart rate has gone up 115. You also you already notice in the halter, there is ST segment changes to starting. So he is driving, again there is some amount of ischemia, this is quite a little cool, but the driving itself is a strain and the traffic, honking horns and all these things will produce. Then he is walking at a reasonable speed, then probably his uh, ischemia is further precipitated. Like here, you know, his heart rate has gone to 135, then immediately we are experiencing the ischemic changes in the ECG. Suppose he is talking to uh, on telephone to someone and very anxiously, he is talking probably to his wife or someone or, you know, who is shouting from the other end or uh, his uh, person who received loan from him, he is shouting at him to give back, whatever is the reason, a telephone conversation has precipitated some ST segment changes. Let's say the person went for tennis without knowing that there is a disease here and his heart rate is 160. At that time, his ischemia is so severe and it may end up in acute infarction. The acute uh, ST segment elevation in auction. So the story is people, majority of the people, they may be having a rather significant narrowing of the coronary arteries, but at rest they are asymptomatic. They never exert their uh, body, they never heart rate goes beyond 80, always in the armchair, always watching the TV or the mobile phone, and uh, you know, there's no chance for them to get chest pain. If you ask them, do you get chest pain? No. Do you work? No. Do you exercise? No. In such a case, the only way I can bring out is do a treadmill and then bring it out. Or if the patient is rather little active, give it a whole tear. And after 24 to 48 hours of observation during his various activities, we can pick up the act. Now, whenever the activity is going and the heart rate is more, the ischemic changes are seen. And that candidate can be immediately taken up for elective angioplasty and treatment to prevent acute ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. Okay. The message is loud and clear. Even if the patient is asymptomatic, if particularly in the elderly, if they have the risk factors for atherosclerosis, and if there is a treadmill is positive or treadmill is equivocal, Holter has to be done. And either treadmill or Holter gives a, an indication of ischemia, they must be evaluated by coronary angiography. Why? To prevent sudden cardiac death, or acute my, through and through myocardial infarction. In young individuals, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Because in young individuals, what will happen? The block is there and suddenly it ruptures. It can't, gets them unaware. And then sudden acute uh, infarction will occur, ST segment elevation, or they may even drop down dead. So Holter is an ambulatory ECG along with the BP also it is monitored. Look at the stress test deep ST inversion 
Holter recording shows the changing pattern of ST segment as the heart rate at different activities versus ST changes during vigorous physical activity like playing tennis, which we have seen. The message is that these patients must be evaluated. Uh, everybody who is above 60 who has the risk factors for coronary artery disease, do a treadmill or a Holter. Pick up those who have ischemic changes and then put them on for angiography. And depending on the results of the angiography, if the treatment is warranted, we go ahead with that. Okay. Now we have to understand a bit about the Q waves. Fortunately or unfortunately, there are what are called the normal Q waves. Why they occur and what are pathological Q waves, we need to understand. So the septal, the activity in the heart, we know the SA node to the AV node through the syncytium, bundle of phase, there is a delay, then the uh, left bundle and the right bundle left again, the anterior fascicle and the posterior fascicle and blocks we have seen. The septal activation is by the left bundle, not by the right bundle. So left bundle gives some branches, electrical branches into the septum and the electricity is conducted in the septum from the left to the right. So this is the left side of the heart where V5, V6 are placed and AVL, AV, I mean L1 are also leads representing the, this part of the myocardium and the Q wave or the, the activity is away from the left sided leads. When there is an initial, but this is not as powerful as the entire left ventricular contraction. Septal activation is a less powerful electrical impulse. So there is a small electrical current initially, which goes away from the left-sided leads. What are left-sided leads? V5, V6, L1, AVL. These are the four left-sided cameras. So because the electrical voltage is going initially, a small current is going away from these left-sided leads, they register a, they registered a positive, uh, sorry, a negative deflection called the Q wave. So which did I am monitoring? Either L1 or V5, V6 or AVL. You can see any one of the leads, particularly L1. The Q waves are easily noticeable, the physiological Q waves in the L1. Notice the small and normal Q wave. Normal, it has not crossed the one small box. And it has not gone beyond three vertical boxes. How many are there? One, two, three, less than three. That is less than 0.3 millivolts and less than 0 0.04 seconds. We know this is 0 0.04 second, 0 0.04 seconds. And uh, the whole one is 0 0.2 seconds, we know. And this is uh, less than one box or one box at the most and vertically less than three millimeters. This is called physiological QB. Why does it occur? because of this, because there is an initial current due to the activation of the septum by the left bundle from the left to the right, which goes away from the exploring lead L1 or V5, V6, registers an initial small negative deflection. And this is followed by contraction of the ventricle, which registers a prominent a positive deflection or the R wave. ST segment is baseline, T waves are normal, there is no ischemia, there is no injury, and this is not also infarction. If there is ischemia, the ischemia, you see T changes. If there is injury, you see ST changes, either depression or elevation, transmural elevation, subendocardial depression. If there is infarction, you see Q waves, but this is not a pathological Q. Why? It is small, less than three, not more than 0 0.04, no associated ST and T changes. For that, this reason, this is a physiological Q or a normal Q wave. Having understood this, let us look at a pathological Q wave. Let's see the description of this. A normal Q in the L lead one is due to the septal depolarization. It is small in amplitude, less than 25% of the succeeding R wave or less than 3 millimeters. Both are tenable. If the succeeding R wave, you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, almost 10. So 25% of 10 will be 4 and this is not 4. So less than 25% of the succeeding R wave or less than 3 millimeters, whichever is there. And then duration is 
less than 0.04 or one small small box it is seen in l1 sometimes also in the left sided leads like v5 v6 so where do i look for physiological cue it is in lead one typically now let us look at the pathological cues why pathological cue occurs so there are three colored zones here you can see there is a black dark black zone that zone is called the zone of infarction where there is a total loss of blood supply surrounding that there is a violet zone which is called the zone of injury and around that there is a gray zone which is called the zone of ischemia ischemia injury infarction ischemia produces t wave changes injury produces st segment changes infarction produces q wave change Isn't it? So S T T and Q F changes three represent like that. Here, what is happening? There is a major part of the left ventricle is infarcted, injured, and ischemic. So much of the current going in this direction is rather very less, and this is the opposing current, and the septum is much more now compared to the current that is going this side. If normally there is current going this side, and this is opposed by the septum here. so the little bit septal waves are seen but here there is no current this side so whatever is going is in the opposite direction only towards the right ventricle and uh, and that's why as though there is a hole here supposing there is no myocard there is a physical hole of course there is an electrical hole here as though there is a physical hole here the lead will be directly seeing currents going away from that as though there is a physical hole but this is eva like but there is no physical hole as yet sometimes cardiac rupture occurs that's a different story and this in this case it is a, an electrical hole is drilled in that part of the myocardium which doesn't have any potential electrical potential so that leads to a very typical q wave which is called the pathological so what what way it is different it is more than 50% of the succeeding r wave why this shows the ventricular uh, muscle the ventricular muscle is less so r wave has dropped so this is much more and more than 3 mm and wider than 0.04 second and there is associated injury change also he have an ischemia change also and this may be slightly elevated to if the injury is also continuing so associated stt change deep q wave more than 25% of the next r wave a wider q wave of more than 0.04 or length depth more than 3 any these features are typical of a pathological q wave physiological q wave or normal q wave is due to the septal activation pathological q wave is due to the myocardial infarction of the left ventricle supposing there is a, there is an infarction here do i see q waves i don't because this ventricle is good and the and its potential is uh, potential the electrical current is much stronger and very rare to see any q waves in the uh, in the right ventricular or the inferior wall also because inferior infarction also there is no current opposing or going this way direction every current is down and left so the q waves are possible only when there is an anterior lateral infarction particularly lateral infarction. okay so where do i look for in l1 what are the features more than 3 mm or more than 25% of the succeeding r wave i understand the succeeding r wave is smaller because of the left ventricular muscle mass is reduced due to infarction electrically active muscle mass is reduced and there is a broadening of the q wave to the extent of more than one small square which is 0.04 second there will be associated t wave and also st this is not in this graph st changes also may be associated so let us see some real time ecgs with q waves pathological q wave a pathological q wave of infarction the respectively is due to the dead muscle electrically dead muscle muscle is dead and electrically silent as though there is an electrical hole in deep in amplitude more than 25% succeeding r wave or more than 4 mm duration is more than 0.04 seconds or one small box it is seen in leads facing the infarcted muscle 
these are usually due to the loss of electrical activity suppose there is cardiomyopathy no infarction but cardiomyopathy in cardiomyopathy what happens the septum becomes very thick so the septal cuve initial deflection also will be very prominent and this is pathological such a q wave without stt changes if you see only q wave changes in this previous ecg you see you have seen the q wave with the stt change and r wave voltage is a drop whereas in case of my cut the, the, this one you know when you have a sort of hypertrophy of the cardiomyopathy in l1 you see q and a tall r wave in b6 so that means ventricular muscle is preserved rather than accentuated here and there is no associated t inversion here such a condition the q wave is cardiomyopathy so we have learned physiological q waves infarction q wave and then cardiomyopathy q wave in idiopathic hypertrophy cardiomyopathy septal q wave in lead one is deep and prolonged because of the excessive septal thickness similar to the mi q wave but there will be marked lvh evidence in the v5 v6 leads and r wave amplitude is very tall unlike in infarction where the r waves are reduced and associated st changes are absent now take a patient of uh, myocardial infarction we have seen the uh, serial changes in a different uh, slide now we relate it to the time serial changes related to the time of the infarction the first one is before coronary occlusion a typical p wave pr segment the physiological q wave and then the qrs normal baseline st segment and the prior t wave a typical normal ecg okay the onset and first of uh, first of the several changes first seven, first few hours still the r wave is normal because the muscle mass has not occurred as yet st segments are getting elevated because of the injury and the peak t wave or the hyperacute t waves which are more than 50% of the r wave tell me this is a hyperacute infarction the first few hours in the first day what happens is r wave starts diminishing st segments are still elevated the peak t waves are returning down here then what happened the r waves are gone almost you know no r wave significant pathological q waves have appeared st segment elevation has decreased t wave inversion started occurring when first and second day after the second or third day the r waves are almost absent only q s is seen entire thing is q wave only q s complex st is have returned baseline deep t inversion is cup shaped symmetric t inversion has this is a, a symmetric t inversion to start with became a symmetric t inversion says me that it is more than 3 days already so after several weeks what will happen the r wave slowly started returning because all the injured zones and the ischemic zones they recover and from their you know stunning effect there is what is called the myocardial stunning i uh, when you come to the theory part i will tell you the myocardial stunning is no more there the current in the left side of the muscle there and you get the r wave story coming up st segments have returned to baseline t waves are becoming flatter compared to here q waves are still present but the depth is less so this is after several weeks so normal ecg hyperacute in the first few hours during first 24 hours Uh, the t wave st elevation t coming down q slightly started to appear then in the second first and second days q waves are prominent st is returning normal asymmetric t inversion after 3 days symmetric t inversion st segment became normal and then the market depth of the q waves no r waves after that several weeks r waves started appearing q waves become less deeper and then the st is are becoming baseline and then the t wave inversion is becoming flatter and after a month after 4 5 months the t wave may become upright also next one these are called the serial ecg changes so you have an opportunity as a postgraduate 
to do a thesis and demonstrate the serial ECG changes in the next 50 myocardial infarction patients. You can see when they occurred, and you can follow them for about three weeks or six weeks, maximum 12 weeks, and see on admission what is the presentation, what are the symptoms like, what are the enzymes, and you repeat them after one day, two days, three days, when the enzymes are coming down, correlate them with the ECG changes and serial ECG changes. It could be a good question to answer in your own setting. Try and correlate with the enzymes and the symptoms and the treatment. So normal ECG does not exclude myocardial infarction or IHD because if the patient is here and about to go into this stage, a normal ECG does not exclude MID. Means what? The sensitivity of the test is very low. Sensitivity means ability to exclude disease. Specificity is very high. Suppose I see something like that. So very few conditions occur with such an amount of ST elevation and T wave changes like this, barring pericarditis and you know other uh, conditions, electrolyte changes, and also the cerebral uh, hemorrhage. If I exclude this, is I can swear that this is a myocardial infarction. It is highly specific. If there are injury changes, ischemic changes, particularly injury and the infarction changes, they are highly specific. Ischemic changes are not that specific. Injury changes and infarction changes, Q waves and ST elevations, ST depressions are highly specific. They confirm the disease. But absence of those changes, that means normal ACT does not exclude the disease in the first few hours at least. So by the time the ECG change is developed, it will take a little while. So don't discharge the patient with severe symptoms. Admit him. Even if the ECG is normal, don't discharge him. After a few hours, you see the change is coming up. Okay. So drop in the RV voltage and ST elevation. This, of course, I've explained with the ECG, all the things. Now, you need to relate the type of infarction, area of infarction with the vessel. This Netter's drawing is an excellent way of looking at the different vessels occlusion, what it does and which lead it reflects. Remember this diagram in the mind forever. And many people have appreciated this diagram. So you can see here in one go, which wall is affected, which vessel is affected, which lead shows the chain. So let's start with the anterior wall. So this is the anterior wall. We know the anterior wall. The major supply of the anterior wall is the LAD, left anterior descending artery. And this is obstructed here. There is an occlusion of the left anterior descending coronary artery. And that leads to anterior infarct. This area of the muscle is electrically dead and infarcted. So it may give way and then produce the rupture or arrhythmia or do any sort of complications we have seen. But the lead that I need to, the vessel that is affected is anterior descending artery. The lead that I lead need to look at is septal V1, V2, V3, V4 anterior. Anterior septal or anterior infarction, V1, V2, V3, V4 are the leads which reflect the changes. Understandable, isn't it? Anterior infarction. LAD is the culprit vessel. V1, V2, V3, V4 are the leads to look at the chain. These changes can be in the form of ST segment elevation or presence of Q waves, T inversions, associated injury, associated ischemia in the contiguous leads. Okay. And we know depending on the age or the time elapsed from the infarct, the changes will be different as we have seen in the previous EC. Okay, now the anterior wall is all right, but the circumflex artery got occluded and the left lateral surface of the heart, a so-called lateral surface of the heart, there is no right lateral. That is why we say lateral means left lateral. The LCX or part LED branch could be the culprit. There could be an obstruction to the diagonal branch of the LED or the LCX. One of them may be affected, LED or LCX. And this is the zone of infarct and the leads are left-sided leads. What are left-sided leads? V5, V6, 
L1 ABL. We have placed 12 cameras. Four of them are depicting the pictures from the left side. They are we know the left L1, the ABL, V5, V6. Lateral in fact, the changes are in V5, V6, L1, ABL. LED or LCX is the culprit vessel, or there could be a combination of them, then both may be occluded. And uh, there may be changes of in ischemia, there may be changes of ischemia means T waves, injury, ST segment elevation or depression, and then infarction means Q wave presence. Changes of ischemia, changes of injury, changes of infarction in the lateral wall are reflected in B5, B6, L1, ABL. The culprit vessel is LAD or LCX. Okay. Now, inferior infarct. So the inferior infarct is here, the inferior wall, also called the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. The part of the heart that is in contact with the diaphragm. That is why it is called diaphragmatic surface or inferior surface. The inferior surface of the heart is we know from the coronary circulation we studied earlier in this workshop is due to the RCA. The RCA is the major, major vessel which supplies the inferior part. Okay. So, inferior infarct is due to the culprit vessel is the RCA. The cardiologist or the person who is looking for the culprit vessel, they will look at the RCA carefully, seeing changes of inferior infarct. Where are these changes? These changes are in L2, L3, AVF. Why? We have put three inferior cameras to record the events, electrical cameras, to record the events of the inferior part of the heart. They are the L2, which is 60 degrees lead, AVF, which is 90 degrees down lead, and L3, which is the 120 degrees lead. That is 60, 90, 120, 60 to 120, those leads, which are the frontal plane down leads are the inferior leads. And RCA is the culprit vessel. What about the posterior infarct? Posterior surface of the heart I cannot see. It is the one which is in towards the esophagus and in anterior to the esophagus is my posterior wall and anterior to the vertebral column. I cannot see that. So whatever changes I see I, anteriorly, there will be mirror changes. What is happening here? A, ref, a mirror of that will be seen in the anterior. What is the culprit vessel? Either the LCA coming from the left side or the RCA coming from the right side. So either the RCA is occluded or the LCX is occluded and in 30% of the people LCX is, domin uh, LCX is dominant. Dominant means that is the main vessel which is supplying the posterior part. Whereas RCA is dominant in the remaining bit. So it depends upon which is the dominant vessel anatomically. Either the RCA or the LCA or a combination of them can produce posterior wall in fact. Where is my posterior wall? I cannot show you which is my posterior wall because it is on the back part of the heart and this is anterior to my structures like esophagus, vertebral column and all the aorta and all that. And that is picked up by mirror changes in the septa anterior leads, septal leads, V1 and V2. These leads, V1 and V2 leads exactly are, the, are, are overlaying the posterior wall in a way that the posterior wall is mirrored in the V1 and V2. Sink into this diagram very well. This should be, a, you should have a mental picture. The moment you close the eye, when we say LAD, you must know which part of the heart is affected, which leads are, I mean, are showing the changes. Anterior infarct, LAD is the culprit vessel, V1, V2, V3, V4 are the, are the leads that we have to look for. Lateral infarct, lateral surface of the heart, they including the apex also. LAD of the LCX is the culprit vessel, V5, V6. L1, ABL are the left-sided electrical cameras.
inferior infarction diaphragmatic infarction diaphragmatic surface is the surface of the heart which is in contact with the diaphragm and this is supplied by a right coronary artery and the leads that show are the inferior leads what are they l2 60 degrees abf 90 degrees l3 120 degrees so these are the inferior camera posterior sur surface of the heart cannot be conceptualized directly like the anterior surface but we know it is the just behind the anterior surface on the same plane and this is anterior to the posterior structures like esophagus or vertebral column and all that and that is supplied by either rca or lcx or a combination of both lcx is left circumflex rca is right coronary lcl lad is the left anterior descent and these changes are picked up in v1 and v2 which leads are directly opposite the posterior surface so mirror changes in v1 and v2 so let us now look for a tabular form so lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 avr avl avf v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 if i see in v5 v6 and avl and l1 these are the lateral leads when there is lateral lead the culprit vessel is lcx okay if i see changes in l2 l3 avf which are the inferior leads the culprit vessel is posterior diagonal descending artery of the rc can say simply rc okay the anterior in fact is v3 v4 this is diagonal branch of the lad lad and v1 v2 is a septal branch if the entire lad is occluded v1 v2 v3 v4 will be the anterior septal will be the thing so this also in a way explains you the color coded way of understanding avl doesn't tell you anything about the infarction because it is the right sided lead and it is a taps the potential from the cavity so we will not get much information about infarction in the avr but all other leads will tell me where is the infarct l1 avl v5 v6 lateral wall infarct left circumflex l2 l3 avf inferior wall infarct rci is the culprit vessel v1 v2 are septal v3 v4 are uh, anterior and also i know v1 v2 will show, show the complementary changes or mirror changes of the posterior in part okay hello proritis chills tiger fever okay now now what is the time now it's uh, 11 10 so maybe at this point we would uh, stop and then go for the remaining part of the ischemic heart disease what what investigations we have in our hand to know the ischemic heart disease of course at 12 we dcg which we are studying x ray test treadmill test provocative test treadmill test can be chemical um, provocation or it could be a treadmill test provocative test can be at exercise provocation or a chemical provocation troponin test t and i ldh cpk mb and the echocardiography and doppler to know about the contractility of the heart and the the various pressures there and the calcium scoring and the ct angiography exercise echo dobutamine challenge echo just like exercise ecg there is exercise echo or dobutamine e echo perfusion tests are there like stress thallium systemic beast or dipyridamol challenge test 3d coronary cartography is available pet scan coronary angiography is the gold standard apart from that mri of the cardiac mri so these are various investigations that you have which we will learn in the theory of course we are now looking at the importance and interpretation of 12 lead ecg now from next time onwards we will start anterior wall uh, posterior wall inferior wall and then all the and the combinations of them 
right ventricular end portion are there still which will be another 30 slides which will be the next week uh, this one now i have here uh, i'll stop here at this point and i wanted to say that the questions are answered by the by the students most of the students have submitted i do not know how many not submitted you said uh, 27 i remember to have seen uh, over 20 uh, people answering the questions and i am very glad that you came out with the answers those who, who have not answered please answer there is still time and most of you most of you most of the questions are correct it's good that means that the students are very bright and picking up or the teacher is good enough to transmit the knowledge or both isn't it so if you have understood that means you are by attentive and listening and are able to so both ways it is possible so dr mahendra has got something to say i would ask him to talk and i think sir it is very clearly explaining everything and uh, so an easy and nice for these people they are lucky to have uh, this kind of uh, thing during the pg uh, somebody will tell few points like that during rounds so it's all uh, very detailed thing one thing is they should also uh, go ahead sir Uh, just uh, one thing. They have also know that the T inversion is also important for the diastolic uh, function, the relaxation point. Yeah, uh, that way, uh, that way. It also says T wave per se. What are the changes of T wave? The diastolic fun- function also. Function about the, the, the uh, diastolic dysfunction is a kind, a kind of a ischemia, isn't it? It's not usually yeah. not important. Okay. Diastolic dysfunction okay. is ischemia only. Is ischemia. The heart is crying for help. So that is oh, so not, is not able to relax well. Correct. Okay. Failure to okay. relax. Okay. Now the point is the, we are trying to correlate every stage with the clinical information so that the ECG is more on a play applied science here rather than the electrophysiology of the ECG. So the idea every time is we are trying to relate it to a clinical case and trying to do that.